it's, it sounds like you have sort of the the open screens policy. Has that uh, been just kind of the the constant, or is there has there been struggles with that? Has that been something? Another great question, and that the struggles with that usually comes from parents mm -hmm. more than the young people themselves. We consider screens, like Peter Gray says, a tool of our time and our culture. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, people use screens. I I teach a couple classes at Emberk. I, I have a, the crazy crimes class, and inevitably we'll talk about what you know ten dollars in nineteen forty five was worth. And so I'm, I'm like, can somebody please look that up? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't know what that is, or um, can, can, I don't know everything. There's no way I can know everything. Right. So sometimes somebody will ask a question and it's enough to derail my thought process. It's easy for me to get distracted too. So I can bump that to somebody else. I'll say, okay, can you look that up please? Mm -hmm. So we encourage people to, to use their, their screens and their devices the way that they need to. We've gotten a lot of feedback from people with anxiety mm -hmm. and people that are neurodivergent, that the screens are very soothing. I had to have a major surgery a couple of years ago and I absolutely was playing Tomb Blast, you know, right when I'm waiting in the waiting room because I was so freaked out. And so sometimes that is what people will use as a tool to sort of soothe themselves and calm themselves down. We have a lot of gaming that happens and a, a lot of the gamers stay together and they play together and they really are working together and collaborating right. together. So some of the challenges that we have with that is they can get really loud and really mm. enthusiastic and our building is 200 years old. And sometimes they'll, you know, they'll jump up and down and we're like, Hey, we're underneath of you and we would like to stay you know, underneath of you. So it's things, conversations about, Hey, can you guys lower it? Or are there are ways that we can problem solve around the volume of what you're doing. And then, you know, every now and then we'll have somebody that really stays on that screen. And then we'll check in and say, Hey, how are things going? How are you feeling in this space? And most of the time, what looks like being totally absorbed and checked out is somebody that's really paying attention. Mm. And it's a wonderful tool to be present but also appear like you're not present. So mm. we will see people that will be sitting in a corner and looking like they're playing Candy Crush and they are playing Candy Crush, but they're still listening to the conversation and they're mm. still part of it. And that is maybe their comfort zone and that maybe that's their way of easing into the community. We do get parents that are like, oh my gosh, I'm so freaked out about screens. I'm afraid they're gonna get addicted to it and all these other things. So we do do conversations about that. What we have found is when people restrict the screens, then they'll come to Embark and only do the screens. Mm. And so, because they're not getting fulfilled with that at home, they're gonna eat it all up while they're with us from nine to 3.30. And because they know when they go home, they can't do it anymore. Right. So that right. has been one of our observations for certain people that really have that need to play the video games or collaborate with people. And it really is very, very collaborative, but that is, that is one of the things we have noticed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, and this is parallel to, to what, so in, there's a book called glued to games mm. by Scott Rigby and Richard Ryan. And, and it really go, it, it was actually written around games specifically, but mm. I think it applies somewhat to the social media environment we're in as well, but, but to screens is that, that when you look at self-determination theory, what you're seeing there is like there's something around the autonomy and the competence or even the relatedness where okay it's restricted at home then you get them you know screens are a place where usually it's the opposite is that there there's games are often designed to build on those needs specifically autonomy competence and relatedness they build on them in order to engage you and but that's that's a human getting a need met, <laughs> you know? And so what happens when you have an abundance of need support is that that's no longer an avenue. That's not it. The problem only arises when that's the only avenue for meeting those needs. Interesting. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't know much about the problems that, that people talk about that. Cause I am sort of isolated in this other community <laughs> where people can choose what to do with their time. Right. And right, so, right. We, you know, you can put that down at any time that you want to and do something else. Right. And, um, you know, that's, that's intriguing for me because I really don't, 
spend as much time. I, I, you know, when I moved to Embark, I stopped teaching in public mm -hmm. schools. And so I'm not seeing any of that when I'm teaching in public right. schools because they cannot do any of those things. So yes, the fear that parents have that, that their child is going to stay on that screen all day. Yes, we have some people that stay on the screen all day, but they're talking with their friends and they still do other things and they can do other things. They have access to all the art supplies and all the science supplies and going into town and, you know, there's a creek nearby and so they right, can do right. all these other things. I think the screens are also a big part of the de-schooling process for some people too, sure, sure. because like what you were saying with self-determination theory, it's like autonomy is there, right? Now I can do this thing and I am competent at this, man. I've got this thing. And even if I'm not, I can get there. And it's such a great way of having natural consequences, right? <laughs> right. Because like, if you can't get to that next level of the game and you're really angry about it, and you're, that game doesn't care. Right. right. There's right. nothing about that game that's going to emotionally connect with you. There's no you can't do anything on your side of begging and manipulating or anything to get that game. You just have to do it. And then you can get to this place where you can make a choice like, you know what, this isn't worth it to me or, or what do I need to do to get there? Mm -hmm. And what are the resources that I can access to get there? So when right. you're at a place like Embark, you can ask a friend to help you with it. You can go online and ask somebody else or you can read about it. This is just sad bitterness on my part as somebody that used to play Mario when I was, you know, in the 1990s, because I didn't have that. You had to go to like some weird flea market and find a magazine to find out how to get to the next place. And that's only if your mom gave you a ride. <laughs> so there's, there's so many more ways to, to build that connection and that relatedness, but also the autonomy and the competency. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and once, once you start to realize that, that, the school your embark can be that community in which they're fully supported then then even if they're using the screens a large proportion of the time it's an option that's available it's not it's not defining them it's not and it's something where the community itself is going to raise concerns if there's a concern about their health or their well-being or, or whatever that's very important <laughs> This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs, so that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host. Don Berg.